This is how I make my coffee with my AeroPress. Do you even AeroPress, bro? I'm gonna treat myself. There's a guy coming over in just a minute to uh, look at the roof because I've had a leak in my house for a while. When it rains really hard, it leaks in our garage, which is obviously downstairs, but we've also been hearing a leak down here. Now, what you're seeing over in that corner, see how it's kind of black in the corner over there? Um, we had to get pipes redone in our wall, and I still haven't uh, gotten that fixed yet. There's a lot we've got to do in the bathroom. We've got to replace the, the floor and the sinks and everything. Um, that's an ongoing thing, but when it rains really hard, we can actually hear the water dripping behind that plastic tarp right there. And this guy had already come once and fixed what he thought was the spot above the garage, but I think this might be the same thing because it's sort of over the garage. I think it might be leaking up there and hitting down there and then running off into the garage, which means this has been going on for a while. Great for property values. You trying to get my attentions? What do you want my attentions? Oh, you're the sweetest boy. You're the sweetest boy on the earth. I love my dogs, but it's always chaos when somebody comes over, especially with the big one. He just never stops barking, unless he knows the person. But it takes like several visits before he starts to trust people. So this guy's coming over and I've got to sit out here with them and I'm sitting close to the back door so that I can hear if the uh, doorbell rings. It's the only way I can uh, have people come over without it being a freaking circus. By the way, I am feeling much better today, so far anyway, and I wanted to thank everybody who left well wishes on the comments to yesterday's video. That, that meant a lot. Thank you very much. So that actually worked out okay. Um, it turned out there was a vent pipe for the plumbing that was going up through the top of the roof and it, uh, the seal on it, the caulk or whatever, had degraded. So that's where the, apparently the water was coming in. I hope that fixed it. $50, this guy charged $50. So if you're in the Dallas area, it's s and Roofing. That's the guy who, who uh, helped me out. He actually kind of lives in my neighborhood. So uh, I'm giving a little plug. Hopefully that fixed the problem. Uh, I guess we'll find out soon because it's supposed to like storm pretty bad later, like hail and all kinds of crap. So we'll see about that. But uh, I got my shirt on. I'm going to record the uh, video for next Thursday. Getting ahead a little bit. Um, I started to put it off because I do have a lot of other stuff I need to do today. Just kind of random things with Canker Boy and whatnot. But I do need to get that one taken care of. I would rather just go ahead and get it recorded and out of the way. So that's what I'm going to do right now. He was also extremely farsighted, which went pretty much undiagnosed until he was eight years old. He was practically blind, which means that he learned mostly through feeling things. He had a very tactile learning experience. All right, so here's what I'm working on right now. Uh, when I put send out Canker Boy packages, I include these little newsletters and they just kind of have some advice and some tips and stuff. Um, and just a, little, just a little message from me in there. So whenever I send these out, a big part, and you've seen this in some of the other TMI videos actually, a big part of this is folding this up. And actually some people on this channel recommended that I look into a paper folder. So I am looking into that. The problem is, unless you wanna spend like 600, $700 that could actually fold something crossways like this, all I can really do is get paper folders that fold things long ways like this, either in a Z fold or in a triple fold or in a half fold. So what I'm looking at doing is creating them like this. So I kind of was working with some prototypes yesterday. Um, so this is actually like half of a normal piece of paper. And I got it so that it all fits on the back there and like this. And I've got it so that they could fold up like so, and people could just get this and it's in a box and then they just open it up and it's less folding. 
And the more I think about it, this is a great idea because I would use half the amount of paper, half the amount of ink. It would actually save me some money over time, I think. And the problem is um, I have to cut these in some way. Now this, I just kind of like licked it and I can't obviously do that for, for what I'm sending out. So I'm playing around with this. So there's, there's five of them here. And I've had this bad boy, this little cutter, for a long time, and it's actually collected dust. I haven't really used it lately. But as you can see, this is just a prototype. And it's got it printed on both sides. So if I could feed it through a paper feeder or a paper folder and have it fold up sideways like this and then slice them. Wait, that's not right. No, it would fold it lengthwise. Wait, no, it wouldn't. Damn it. Okay, never mind. I'm an idiot. It would actually fold it this way. This is what the paper folder would do, is fold it this way. And then I would need to cut right there to produce the desired effect. So that it would be kind of like this, or whatever. Yeah, so that it would be like this when it's all said and done. Okay, so uh, I'm all right. Okay, all right. So the reason I was testing this out is I want to make sure I could cut a significant number of papers in a row with this because if I can't, then it kind of that kind of defeats the purpose. So that's what I'm testing out right now. All right, so I'm a little bit geometrically stupid. I was folding it the wrong way, and that's why it wasn't working, and I had a little bit of a a mild stroke. Anyway, uh, so this is five of them. Hang on, let me adjust this up. I will be doing this on the floor later, but this is the room's a mess right now. So this is five of them, and I'm if I cut these, then it would be ten each, and I do like 120 or so, maybe 130 every month. So I'd only I'm just trying to factor in the number of times I would have to cut this so that it makes it worth it and makes sense. I'm all about finding efficiencies, and I could always take these to a Kinkos or something, and they could just slice it for me. But obviously, if I have this, it would be free. So let me just see. If this could actually cut through five of these without it being a major disaster. Actually, let me do it this way. So it's about five and a half inches right about there. It's a flush. Mark it down. All right, here we go. Not bad. I had to go through it twice, but it worked, and there's no like bad edges there or anything. I think I could do this. Cool. So I think that works. By the way, if you think only five papers or five pages was not a whole lot for uh, that thing, anyway, this this is a much thicker stock of paper. This is 28 pounds. I figured if I'm only gonna, only going to fold it over once, I should have something a bit more. Uh, significant substantial on there uh, also these things by the time they get to their uh, customers they're in sort of like they're just in regular there's not one right here whatever here they go out in these envelopes which are just kind of plastic envelopes so by the time they get to most customers they're all wrinkled up and everything so I thought a little bit stiffer paper might work a little bit better all right paper folder ordered I'm always about finding new efficiencies, just finding a quicker way of, of getting things done. It's just one little tiny piece at a time. That's kind of how I've done the YouTube channel and that's how I do Kinker Boy, or try to anyway. So next up, uh, I need to go over Nick's edit for tomorrow's video and export that. And if I can get that done in the next hour or so, I don't know, I might, uh, I might run down to the coffee shop, do the rest of my work there. We'll see. Okay, I'm exporting tomorrow's video. Um, Nick just killed it. I only had to like tweak a couple of things on it. I'm actually kind of excited about this one. I had so many people asking me, <laughs> oh, this gimbal. No, I had so many people asking me to do a video on the uh, Event Horizon Telescope and I wasn't planning on doing it because I just didn't know what I could add to it because so many other people had done such a good job covering it, like uh, Ver Derek from Ver Veritasium. But, uh, no, I went ahead and decided to tackle it. I think I've, I've found an interesting way of uh, basically comparing how we visualize black holes over the years to 
uh, how we do black, how, how this uh, real black hole picture came out. And I had so many requests, I'm thinking it's, it's probably going to be a pretty popular video. And it came out pretty well. I was, I was actually really excited once I watched it. I hope it does well. We'll see. I'm going to eat something. I've had some people asking if I'm still doing the whole intermittent fasting thing. And the answer is yes and no. I've been, I've been really inconsistent about it. I haven't really been putting that much uh, effort into it. Um, I don't know, these days I tend to sort of just eat whenever I feel like eating. And since I started doing the, the fasting thing, um, I actually don't wind up feeling like I want to eat until later in the afternoon. Like it's, it's almost three o'clock right now and I'm just now starting to get hungry. So um, that's just kind of the way I've been doing it. And I'm, I'm making some eggs right now because um, apparently when you break your fast, you want to do it with protein because then your body will put that protein towards your, your keto, whatever. Um, there's, there's, there's things that I had heard that you're supposed to use, supposed to eat protein when you break your fast. So I'm making some eggs. Plus I just kind of feel like making eggs. Feel like making eggs! I have to say, I am surprised how good I feel today, considering how bad I felt yesterday. I, I, I really thought I would get up this morning and feel sick all day long, and I haven't. I, I felt pretty good. Still a little bit of congestion, but barely any. Go figure. And I also thought the weather would be a lot worse. They made these dire predictions about hail and stuff. Maybe that'll come later, but so far it's been a little misty, but it's, it's actually been okay. So I, was, I expected to be sick, and in horrible weather all day long and uh, under the weather in two different ways. And it hasn't been that bad. I mean, I mean life, you know, you just never know. What could it be? safe now. Oh, it's over there. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's over. Well, so far I've managed to do two days after getting back home. Hopefully you guys are finding this fun and interesting, at least a little bit. Um, kitty. Hit a cat. Sorry, that storm still hasn't hit yet. I guess it's going to hit around 10 or 11 o'clock. And by the way, I'm starting to realize that if I'm going to be doing this at home, it's probably going to be more... Uh, I probably should retitle it uh, Stuff I Do When My Wife Isn't Home. <laughs> I guess as soon as she gets here, I kind of just stop recording because she doesn't really want to be on YouTube. And uh, she also doesn't like the idea of me always pulling out my phone to document everything. Um, like, I generally try to live my life out like in the real world and not through my phone but she's like a thousand times more hardcore about that but anyway um i'm about to hop on a call that i do every wednesday with some guys that are in sort of like a mastermind group and um and i'm gonna just cut this thing together so that was wednesday and uh i guess i'll catch y'all tomorrow if i keep this up let me know what you think later